welcome again to another video with me so today i'll be talking about the science of scientific writing yes so what is this scientific writing going to be when we were in covid 19 pandemic we used to surf about what is this sars cov 2 and even now what is this monkeypox virus is whenever we google it we used to get informations return in some articles very easy for a non science background also very easy for a science background also which means the person who have written the article would be very well versed in writing it so that it becomes understandable for every readers who are going to read it so i'm going to talk in this video about the science of scientific writing in detail so if you are someone who would like to write a scientific articles or research paper or your manuscript for your journal you can look on to the topics that i'll be talking in detail so come along with me and let's discuss the topic in detail This is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So let's start off with the video. Be cognizant of the topic that I'm going to talk about so that you become an excellent scientific writer. So there is a position which is available as a scientific writer also. For entering into a research, you definitely need to be very good enough in writing also. So I'll be talking about all the topics or all the tips that you need to know to become an excellent scientific writer or what's the science behind a scientific writing. The first important thing, keep your readers in mind. This is the most important thing when you're going to start any kind of article. Suppose if you're someone who would like to write a review of literature or an article based on the problem, it can be of anything. The fungal infection that is creating a greater fuss or viral that creates a greater fuss or whatever you want to write to. First important thing is keep your readers in mind. That's the most important thing because the readers can be from a science background as well as a non-science background. That's what I told you an example like when there was COVID-19 pandemic, everybody wanted to know what is this SARS-CoV-2. So everybody went and started searching for it. So the article has to be very easy for the reader to understand it clearly. So keep your readers in mind when you start any kind of writing, whether it's your research paper or whether it's going to be an article or whatever it is, always think in the reader's perspective. The first important thing as I already told you, you have to think about it and pen down the piece of information how you wish to read it. Yes, just imagine that you are the reader going to be. So suppose if you're going to talk about one of the problem that is existing in the society, some scientific problems, first pen down all the points that you're going to write it in your entire articles. And always think, if you are a reader, will you be able to understand what you're going to write? So think about the first situation and then you can see people from different backgrounds. The readers can be from a scientific background or they can be from a non-scientific background also. You might sometimes think, ma'am, usually in a research papers, all scientific people are going to read it. But researchers also have a different research fields also. The background is going to be different. If you're going to work on oncology, people are going to work on a plant biotechnology. So there are different streams. People are going to be different even as a scientist also. So always remember in a reader's perspective. So readers are different background even though scientists are going to be in another field also. So th this is the most important thing and suppose when you're writing or pen, pen down all your points, that time you might feel some sentences wouldn't make any sort of sense. So if you feel any kind of thing like that, then always eliminate the point that moment because when you're going to put those points, it might misinterpret. So the readers will not be able to understand what you're trying to say. So these are the important points that you have to keep in mind when you're going to start any article or research paper or any kind of manuscripts or whatever it is, keep your readers in mind. What's the second important thing? Yes, give a structure or a shape to your writing. Yes. Now you know what are the things you're going to put it over there, but it has to be coherent because if you're going to put random uh, informations or random ideas of yourself and if you're going to scatter all those information, the reader will get confused. So always give a structure or a shape to your writing, whatever it is, it can be an article or whatever it is, a scientific writing, whatever it is. So what is that structure going to be? A framework. Uh, suppose if you're going to build a house, uh, so what the engineer usually does is use to give a map for you. 
a blueprint for you for the construction. The same way, when you are going to start writing it, you need to know what is going to be the blue map, blueprint for your writing up going to be. So a framework or a form to your content that can be called as a shape or a structure. And always remember, any reader, even if you are a reader, you will always tend to look for some shape or structure. What is the coherence of the first uh, paragraph with the second paragraph, the second with the third paragraph. Every reader always look for the shape and the structure because it has to be coherent. If you are talking about one thing in the beginning and you are talking something different in the second paragraph, it doesn't make any sense. So the next is going to be you lead the reader. That's the most important thing. Even though you write and you people doesn't know who has written it, but you are a reader. You are literally writing it, telling people this is the information. So you lead the entire reader in the complete article. So make sure you are going to lead the entire readers and make an overall impression through your writing. This is the most important thing. The best way uh, for a writer is to impress the audience or to impress the reader who are going to read it. They should fall in love uh, in writing your, uh, in your scripts or in your writing. That's the most important thing. So what you have to do, frame accordingly. Suppose, let me talk in case of a research project. First, suppose if you're going to do how to give a shape to it. First, understand what's the problem you're going to do it. And after that, if you're going to do it, you have to study about the statistics. What's going to be the previous situation if people were affected by this disease? And how many people were affected in India? How many people were affected in the worldwide? So you have to give that one. And what are the people who have done research on this project? Or on this diseases so you have to coherently write all those things properly so this is how you have to frame a structure and after that what are the things that you have done in the project like what are your findings what are your interpretations and finally your conclusion and your acknowledgement has to be there so always give a structure or a shape to your writing whatever you're gonna write an article or a research paper what's the next one write simple and concise complexity increases misinterpretations yes so usually when you're going to start writing we will think like when we make complicated sentences it understood we are knowledgeable so it doesn't make like we are actually writing it for the readers to make what my ideas are so what i wanted to convey you have to make it in a very simple way very concise way and do not make anything complex for the readers if people have done the same thing when during SARS-CoV-2, nobody would have understood what exactly the virus is going to be. So you have to make everything very simple, concise and do not make anything complex. If you're going to put too much of complex when you're going to write an article very specifically, not in the research paper. Research paper usually has some rules and regulation that you have to write according to the journal. If you're going to go in for some articles, you should not make many things complicated. If you're going to make many things complicated, people will misinterpret things. So this is the most important thing. So don't complicate your writing when you're going to start off with. And readers doesn't get the same intent. What you think? will not be understood by the person who is going to read it and learn to simplify anything for the others whether it comes to a research project or an article or whatever it is make easy for the others to read because simplifying is definitely going to be the key when you're going to make everything simple people can read it a bit faster same way if you're going to read a complete research paper in the entire day and there's one person who's going to talk about the complete research paper within five to ten minutes in a short uh, paragraph then definitely people would look for that so always make simple concise and remove all the complexities because it's definitely going to cause mis misinterpretations the most important thing i'm going to tell you hook points or hook time yes so all of you know about the fish when we used to put a worm it used to get hook up and we used to take the fish out the same way when you are a writer, you need to hook the readers. You need to pull the readers towards your side. So how can you do that power of the hook line? Yes, you can ask some questions. You can actually put some exclamation that has happened before. Is it going to be the scenario in the later uh, 10 decades later? So you can put such kind of question which might make the readers curious of your writing also. So always have some hook lines. This hook lines can be, suppose if you're talking in case of a video, people used to get hooked up because of the thumbnails. So the same way, if you're talking in case of a writer, people used to get fascinated towards the words that you're going to use it or some kind of questions or exclamations you're going to give it. So always think about the 
hook words or hook points or hook lines or sentences. So because it's definitely going to catch the reader's attention when you're going to write any sort of articles. The next comes stress positions. What is the stress positions going to be? Yes. So the article linked about has explained it beautifully. Yes. Suppose if I'm going to write about a topic, suppose let's take some virus. I'm going to write about what's the situation that it has happened before and what's the situation of the virus and how many people are affected. If I'm going to write about another article like this has explained very beautifully, people will have more cautious or they emphasize on the word that is at the end of the sentence. So here you can see beautifully. So which means you're exactly seeing people will tend to know that yes, the article linked here is of course looking beautiful, which means people have a mentality to look at the end of the sentence. So readers emphasize on anything that's at the end of the sentence. So when you're going to breathe, so what exactly happens when you're going to read? What exactly happened? You are actually thinking, yes, it's beautiful. But what exactly happened is it's become a word of mouth to others. So they will tend to say like, yes, the article is looking beautiful because it's already meant there. So which might have impacted them. So people usually emphasize on the last word, which is at the last sentence. So exclamation produces, exhalation produces a sense of emphasis. The same way when you're going to have any sort of breathing, so whatever you take in, you're going to exhale it out. So this is like the same way. So whatever you're going to read it in the article, you're going to tell it to people. This article says about it because it's written like that. So the same way you have to understand the stress position. So that's why you have to write the words accurately for the article. So, so that people get hooked up to the words. The next one, topic positions. What is this topic position is going to be? You can see, you can also write like this. Again, the article linked above has explained it very beautifully. Again, the author is thinking, yes, what are they trying to say in the next sentences or in the next paragraph? First paragraph, if you're talking about the scenario in case of the US that people are affected in India and in the second paragraph, people are affected by these infections and there is a coherence between US and India. How many are affected and is it going to be the scenario in the next decade? If you're going to put questions like that, definitely what will happen? They will save the best for the last. They will think like, okay, something the reader is trying to say something to me. So he will try to read at the end of the phrase also. So you have to make sure the topic position, the first paragraph, what are you talking? The second paragraph, what are you talking? That's going to stand out. The next important thing is link and context. This is the most problem most of us used to make this. So what is that going to be? Suppose if I'm talking about in the initial paragraph, I should say what has happened before so that the reader will think, yes, this was happening before. And I have to put a context below that this can be happening forward. So the reader will get an, a thought like it has happened before also and it is going to happen like this way also possibility is there. So link all your sentences and paragraphs which has happened before incidences and the incidences can be about to happen also. No sentences should be left incomplete. That's the most important thing. You should not leave any sentences and provide context. The reader should be able to look forward what can happen after some period of time. That is going to be the most important thing and both the connections, what they thought about the previous situation and what is going to be the happening later situation. This too has to be linked properly. So the link and the context before and after has to be coherent with each other. The next one, the scientific process. What's the scientific process going to be? Highlight on the old and new information, any context and linkages, which has the previous cases we have seen. I can talk about some 20 years back people were affected by this infection and there is a situation we might expect the same thing to happen after a decade. So always give some old information, the present scenario or the current scenario that is happening and always give some link linkages to the uh, sentences and helps the reader to understand what you want to convey through your writing. This is the most important thing when you're going to write any kind of scientific writing. Okay, the next important thing. Highlight on examples. Yes. So usually if a non-science uh, reader is there, he would not be able to correlate when you're going to talk something scientifically. So you have to give some examples to make them understand if you're going to write an article. So highlight on the examples. So examples can people can correlate very easily. You can tell some example people uh, like that. People have been affected by this uh, diseases this many long time and you can give example of a person who has come out of it. Anything you can give out. So always give a highlight 
on the examples or give examples to your writing and embrace your personal writing style yes this is the most important thing suppose when you're going to start writing you would be thinking my rough draft is not as beautiful as you think because you cannot become a writer initially it comes out of a practice it comes out of a lot of days so embrace your personal writing style yes everybody has a different sort of writing so if you're going to start any kind of article or any kind of your review of literature and you have just started now i'm going to tell you embrace yourself you just be happy about yourself and encourage yourself your own personal writing style that's the most important thing there can be no fixed algorithm it's not like uh, if you're going to write an article there's no rules like you have to write it this way but you have to make the people to understand what you want to say but if when we talk in case of a research uh, projects or something there would be a rules and regulation where you have to follow and we have to write but most of the personal writings do not require any kind of rules or algorithms nothing else is there so you almost have to embrace your personal writings so today we've been talking about the science of scientific writing yes suppose if you are someone who would like to become a scientific writer then please do follow all the tips that i've been asking you to do so so if you find this video is helpful please like share and subscribe to our channel biotechnica and if you have questions you are always welcome to put your questions in the comment section so i'm going to meet you back again with another video thank you all of you for joining thank you